in 9.2, we run into one of the few times where there's a significant difference between the TI-83 calculator and the TI-84 calculator. What I'm about to show you only um, works for the TI-84. Um, they didn't have this function in the TI-83. So if you have a TI-83, you're stuck using the table from the book. Um, if you have a TI-84, you get to do this. So it wants to know the critical T value, T sub 0.02 with 20 degrees of freedom. The way to do that is to go to second distribution, pick number four, inverse t. Um, in an ATID3 calculator, that function is not there, so you can't do this. Then you got to tell it the area in the tail, which is 0.02, comma. Then you got to tell it the degrees of freedom, which is 20. Enter. And you wait, and there you go. All right, what about this one? Find the area, oh, oh by the way, huh. since T sub 0.02 is on the right side, um, the subscript means that it's the area on the right-hand side. So actually, this one would be positive 2.197, OK? Um, the, the subscript notation we learned is actually sec from section 7.2. And it basically means that that small decimal amount is to the right of this value. So it would have to be on the right-hand side of the, of the curve, the T curve. All right, what about this one? The area is to the left is 0 0.25, n is 23. So I would do second distribution, pick number 4, inverse t. I would tell it 0 0.25, comma, but you got to tell it degrees of freedom, which is 22. Enter. All right, and this is t equals negative 0 0.686. Okay, what about corresponding to 90% confidence when n is 17. If 90% is in the middle for the confidence, that means that you've got 0.05 in each tail. Together they make 10%. So you would do inverse t, second distribution, pick number 4, inverse t, 0 0.05. That's how much is in the left tail, comma, 16. Because your n is 17, so your degrees of freedom must be 16. Press Enter. There you go, the, lo the low one. If you want the high one, that would be 0 0.95, right? Um, although, honestly, you can tell what it's going to be. It's positive 1.75, but there you go, positive 1.75. Notice the two of these have to add up to 1. All right, that's how to find critical T values with the calculator. Again, that's only available to ti 4 people. All right, next, what about this body temperature example? Um, we kind of did one like it at the end of the last section. So basically, we want to know, oops, there it is, to construct a 99% confidence interval for average human body temperature, but we don't know what sigma is. Sigma is not given to us. They give us a standard deviation, but they don't tell us it's a population standard deviation. That implies that it's a sample standard deviation. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be a sample one anyway, right? Okay, so what do you do to find this confidence interval? You go stat, go to the right, right to tests. We want a T interval here. We don't get to use a Z interval. A Z interval only gets used if you know sigma, which we don't. So we're going to do a T interval. That's an interval for the mean where sigma is unknown. I'm going to do stats again here because that's what I've got. I don't have a column of data. All right, I'm going to go down here, type 98.25, which I already did because that's the last one I did. S is 0 0.73, 0 0.73, enter, 92, enter. Confidence interval, I want 0 0.99, perfect. Go down or press enter, either one. And you get down to calculate and press enter. And there's your confidence interval. It's not with all the steps to get there, right? So if you're in the face-to-face -face class, you're going to have to show the formula and the substitution and all that jazz, right? There's the formula. You'll have to find your T and your S and your N and all that. But that's how to get the final answer result. Alrighty, what if I had given you a column of data? Well, you do the same thing, but you'd have to enter the data first. Let me enter the data. I'll be right back. Okay, you can see that I've got this data set entered into my calculator, and it wants to know a 95% confidence interval for the average amount of bacteria. So you'd go stat, go to the right to tests, pick number 8, which is T interval. You want to pick data, go to the left, enter, and then tell it the confidence level, and you're done. 0.95.